So that was the Callaway XR Speed, the new driver from Callaway, where fast just got a whole lot faster, or did it? We're about to find out. I'll hit some more golf balls, we'll look at some data, and we'll see how this performs in the hands of the average golfer. And then we'll decide, did fast get a whole lot faster or not? Okay, so welcome back to Steel Plus TV. Thank you for joining The Average Golfer. We'll get back to hitting some golf balls very, very shortly. But for now, let's take a closer look at the Callaway XR Speed Driver and let's see exactly why Callaway are claiming fast got a whole lot faster. Okay, so first of all, it is the hottest ever face, new X-Face VFT, uh, latest evolution of Callaway's variable face thickness, and it's designed to maximize ball speeds across the entire club face. So we've seen this with a number of manufacturers. It's again, the sweeter spot effectively is getting bigger, which is all good news for us average golfers. That's what we want to hear, surely. Right, we've then got, this is a carbon composite crown, and this is to increase MOI. Um, it's 45% lighter versus the XR16, which was a titanium crown, don't forget. So it allows, again, them to move the center of gravity uh, lower and further back, improve forgiveness and greater dispersion numbers. Again, all positive news. This is what we want to hear. So so shaft, op shaft options on this club are the hazardous, and that's a, that's a standard option. Again, premium shaft, and again, seen once again through a number of the drivers offered via uh, Callaway. But first of all, personal idea on how this thing looks. I think it's absolutely stunning, but what I wanna do is put two visuals up together. And this is the Rogue that you see alongside the uh, XR Speed. And for me, they're virtually, I mean, it's hard to separate. The only difference is there's a dark black stroke um, titanium gray type look on the Rogue, whereas you've got a blue, a very dark navy like blue on the XR Speed. I actually love the look of the XR Speed. It really suits my eye and I think it's the best looking driver from the Epic through to the Rogue into now this XR Speed. I like the XR Speed visually more than all these, but like I said at the beginning of the video, all we're really interested in as average golf is how this thing performs. So camera moving, I'll get back to hitting some golf balls and then we'll sit down and have a look at some numbers. Okay, so to start proceedings off in terms of the settings, I'm gonna put this in the kind of setting that I've got currently in my driver. So the head that I'm using is nine degrees. Uh, I've set it up in a neutral position. I've got the Hazardous Project X stiff shaft, that's 65 grams, we'll start with this. Um, like I said, I wasn't keen on the uh, turquoise, although it was a very um, minor detail. I wasn't keen on the color of the shafts on the, uh, on the Rogue drivers. I really like this uh, gray silvery blue almost that matches this head, which again, I said in the intro, I really like the looks of this XR Speed. Um, I like the high gloss finish on the top of uh, drivers and it really does appeal to my eye. I don't like the amount of offset. It seems to me, again, down that uh, very much uh, sort of closed face, and uh, I'm not liking that for my eye, especially with the fact that I've got a tendency already to hit this ball uh, down this left-hand side. Um, but yeah, in terms of how it looks, really, really nice above the ball. Traditional chevron look. Let's hit some balls. Not bad start. Interesting thing to note, first thing I notice, um, and I hit a couple of balls uh, before we started off camera, sound is completely different to that of the, um, that of the, the Rogue and the Epic. I would suggest they've got a slightly duller sound, whereas this is very much a kind of uh, an explosion off the face. It sounds very, very powerful and strong. Whether or not that's the case in terms of numbers, we shall see, but that's the sound it demonstrates. TaylorMade TP5 balls, don't forget, as usual, to test this club. Okay, I'll carry on hitting some balls and we'll get some data, but first uh, impressions are great feel, great sound, great to look at in terms of what I think. But, like I said before, it's all about performance. I mean, to me, this looks like a different colored Epic. It's as simple as that from the top line. I would struggle very much to see the difference uh, from where I'm looking at 
um, fr from the Epic. It, it's very, very similar. So if you've seen the Epic, uh, if you've seen the Rogue, again, the finish from the top of the club is very, very similar. However, like I said, this blue color, very much, uh, I like the look of it, I really do. Anyway, hit a few more golf balls and let's get sat down. Okay, so uh, numbers hit, data recorded by a track man, got a few images thrown out there for you for ball flight as well. Um, and it's interesting to see, I mean, started off maybe club head speed just a little bit um, slower than normally and once again first thing Monday morning, first club hit and it picked up towards the end slightly, um, but didn't really see a dramatic increase in ball speeds. Um, not really convinced that um, anything got a whole lot faster to be honest with you I mean reaching around every driver that I've hit so far in the last whatever um, 12 months or so if I'm achieving sort of a 140 to 142 ball speed then that's pretty around a decent number for me with my um, club head speed unfortunately overall the average dropped down to 139.5 so slightly lower um, the last two shots I hit 141.7, so arguably getting a little bit more warmed up. Um, club head speed, maybe a mile an hour faster and relative to ball speed as well. Again, the setup for me, span, uh, spin number was high, um, 27, couple creeping up there around that 3000 mark. And again, that's too high of a number for me. So again, arguably more time spent on uh, custom fit, looking at a bit of a mess around with these shafts. I, I use the stiff shaft, like I said, and um, the hazardous shaft, normally a low spinning shaft, but it didn't really, like I said, the numbers I was picking up there as high as 3000 is, is quite high for me. Uh, and once again, it all resonated in numbers really. We've got a carrier 228 and an overall total of 247. Let's have a look, longest ball there, uh, well being the last ball I hit, there was one number, was it ball number five, 253. 254 and carries what 231 230 234 so again in and around um a little bit shorter than where i'd expect to be um uh, in terms of comparing it to the sort of better performing drivers that i found for me personally nothing wrong with the performance dispersion was good in all fairness the one thing that again seems to be I don't know you've got to you've got to consider how well you hit the ball in the morning and i was swinging it low a little bit going relatively easy on it i was swinging nice and like it's hard to say in terms of dispersion but i hit it down the line and uh, performed well in my hands um launch angle again just an interesting one to look at before we finish 15.1 too high of a ball um flight in terms of the launch angle for me and once again I think that a bit of tweaking around, but the only shafts that I've seen um, in here at least this morning are the hazardous shafts. I'm not really sure where I'd go in terms of changing that round a little bit for custom fit for me for better performance, but certainly perhaps we could have gone and had nine degree shaft at standard. We could have took one degree off that. Maybe that would have been um, a, an option as well to get eke a little bit of better performance. I mean, look, the overall evaluation of this, great looking golf club, 100 pound maybe 120 130 british pounds cheaper than epic and rogue and um arguably it's there or thereabouts i certainly felt that the rogue and the epic are better performing than the xr speed that's what i would suggest however to counterbalance that argument i preferred the looks and i preferred the sound from the xr speed so well, there's not a huge difference but i can certainly see why the other drives at least it's minimal testing I mean I've had 10 shots here with this this morning a few obviously off camera I found the other the, the, the more premium drivers slightly better performing um, but that was in my hands this morning with that shaft option and I don't think it was perfectly suited to me so there you go that's the viewpoint of the average golfer as ever 
one person's opinion is almost irrelevant. It's important that you get out there, go and try it yourself. It's a really well-made driver. I like the driver. I don't want to knock it too much, but I've always got comparisons in my head and I'm always thinking about the other things that are out there on the marketplace. So there you go. That's me done. I'm going to do a little bit more testing here this morning. Sort of sunshine. It's not a bad day in the UK. So as ever, thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe if you don't already. I think I'm going to make a, a mention to hit the notifications bell uh, because if you want to be um, alerted to each time a video is released from the average golfer and from the channel then you need to hit that notifications bell and uh, it'll give you a bit of an alert to say that has happened anyway thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you very soon